The second higher level executive functioning skill that I wanna talk about, talk about, so we've already talked about time management. Now I wanna talk about organizing space. So how many people or children do you know that really struggle to organize things? So maybe it's their desk at school and there's constantly just papers thrown everywhere or their homework folder and things are out of place or their bedroom, you ask your child to sort their toys and they're just really unable to do it. It's a higher level executive functioning skill, right? It involves critical thinking, problem solving, all of these things. And sometimes we really need to break down this task, this global skill of organizing space into little tiny pieces, little tiny steps and teach it step by step so that our children and loved ones can master and generalize this skill. So the first, step of organizing space is identify the amount of space available. So what is it that you need to organize? This is the space, this is the location where these items need to go. Just being able to gauge how much space is available. And then prioritizing items to keep versus toss. So if it's packing, these are the things that are most important that I pack that need to go in first, or heavy goes in first, light on top. If I'm cleaning my room, I do I really need to keep this piece of scrap paper? I'm not just gonna throw it in the toy box. I need to be able to discriminate and determine that that needs to go to the trash can or candy wrappers don't need to be in my bedroom. Though Those need to go to the trash. Being able to determine which items we should keep versus what we should toss. And then as well as, um, more frequently used items should be easily accessible than the items that we use pretty infrequently, right? So um, the shoes that I commonly wear every day, those are gonna be at the front. Whereas my snow boots, those are gonna be at the back. It's not very often, I live outside of Nashville, Tennessee. It's very infrequent that it snows here. So those are gonna be in the back. It's gonna be harder for me to access the snow boots versus the shoes that I wear every day. The third step is to be able to estimate the total space that we need. So these are the items that I need to pack or these are the items that I need to store. These are the items that I need to organize. Be able to accurately estimate, mm, okay, how much space do you think I need? The fourth step is determine if I have enough space. So if um, we're going on a big camping trip and we are taking a little tiny Prius and it's for a family of 10, hmm, being able to determine whether or not I have enough space um, sometimes can be tricky, but very, very valuable. Um, and then be able to use my space effectively to organize. So given the space that I have available, given the items that I need to organize, be able to use that space effectively. So, you know, being able to line things up. How is, if I'm putting t-shirts into my t-shirt drawer, I need to be able to fold them so that I can store them to where they're easily accessible, but also to where I'm not just gonna wad them. I need to fit a whole bunch of t-shirts into one drawer. And so I need to be able to fold them appropriately to be able to maximize space and use so appropriately. The sixth step is Trial, trial and error alternatives. So how often do we pack to go on a trip or we're organizing a bedroom and we step back and I don't like the way it looks or I don't have enough space, I forgot something or it's packed clear to the brim and now we can't see out the rear view mirrors or we are organizing their our child's helping them go through their desk at school and now they can't access their homework folder because it's in the very back. Um, whatever it is, be able to hmm, have a plan B, plan C. Now go back through the steps. Do I need to weed more items out? Do I need to toss more items? Do I need to potentially access more space? Do I need some more storage bins to be able to organize appropriately? Being able to trial and error alternatives. Um, the seventh step is then, so now we've organized our space, I need to check in for corrective feedback. I need to bring mom in, my teacher in, I need to bring somebody in and determine, did I go through all the steps appropriately? Did I organize this space appropriately, effectively, and is it functional? Being able to check in for feedback is really that self-monitoring skill to make sure that we're teaching to mastery and independence and generalize it across multiple settings and people by our loved ones and individuals being able to request corrective feedback. And then the eighth and final step, we gotta memorize these steps. If we want our children and loved ones to be independent in organizing space, they need to know the exact steps to go through to be able to organize a global space and be able to check off each one of these steps themselves and self-monitor completion of this entire global skill of organizing space. So we're gonna teach multiple skills and activities of organizing space, right? So we might just start with our homework folder. And then we might move to, right, just completing a worksheet. How often do we see our children that write too big on worksheets and they're unable to organize their answers to be able to fit it all um, within the space completed? Um, then we might create a visual calendar, right? So being able to just 
organize a visual space of our daily activities or our monthly activities. Then being able to pack the car for an event, right? Maybe it's just a day trip, maybe it's a weekend trip with our family. Being able to pack the car, organize the space and put things in appropriately. Packing a bag for a trip, such a big task. Not only being able to determine the items that I need, but just being able to fit it all in the bag and make the things that I need more frequently or first readily accessible on top. Being able to clean their room effectively from start to finish, do so thoroughly and be able to organize that space of an entire room. Laundry routine, right? Being able to put the things away and organizing our space with our clothes appropriately and effectively. Cleaning a desk out. Desks, junk drawers and kitchens, right? These types of things. Being able to clean out a cabinet, right? Junk cabinets in our kitchens, a cabinet in the garage, big messy items, being able to organize and clean an entire cabinet. Important, big skill. And lastly, being able to load and unload groceries, right? So going from just organizing our homework schedule and we're working down to generalize across multiple people and settings and becoming um, more accurate and effective to even more difficult tasks of loading and unloading groceries and being able to put them away and organize space effectively. Such an important higher level executive functioning skill that we really sometimes have to not just overstep and let our children and loved ones slip through the cracks, but breaking this skill down and teaching it step by step so that they can be independent and successful.